Okay, this says when dragons on planet Pern lay eggs, the eggs are either green or yellow. Biologists have observed that over the years that 24% of the eggs are yellow and the rest green. Next spring, the lead scientist has permission to randomly select 50 of the green of the dragon its eggs incubate. Consider all possible samples of 50 dragon eggs. What is the usual number, usual number of yellow eggs in the sample of 50? So I'm actually going to take um, a formula from the other problem you sent me, which is right here. Use the rule of the range rule of thumb to find the minimum usual value and maximum usual value. So the minimum is going to be mu minus two sigma. Mu minus two sigma. And the max is going to be mu plus two sigma. Now mu here, it's not really mu because we're talking about a percentage here, a proportion. So this is really going to be P minus two sigma. So it's going to be the percent of eggs that are yellow, which will be 24% of the 50. So mu, when talking about a, bino a binomial distribution, is P times N, which in this case is 24% times 50, which is, what is that, 12? Yeah, that's 12. Just want to double check. 24% of 50. We get 12. So that's going to be our mu, 12. Our sigma is the square root. This is from the um, formula sheet, which is located on our Blackboard page under course materials and additional course materials. There's a formula sheet there. Sigma for a binomial is going to be equal to the square root of n times p times q, which is the same thing as n times p times 1 minus p. So in this particular case, we have the square root oops, of 50 times 24% times 1 minus 24%, which is 76%. So I will find that. This is going to be the square root of 50 times 24% times 76%, 3.0199. So I'm just gonna take my mu 12 minus two times, and then just grab that. We get 5.96. And then I will change that minus to a plus. And I get 18.03. So they often round here, but it says give answers a sensible whole number. This is really close to 6. This is really close to 18. So our answers are from 6 to 18. They round strangely here. So if you go to the second question you sent me, um, the rule of thumb, I think they had 566 and 330 or 639 maybe. Um, just continue using the method you did. You got full credit for this. Um, they just mark these wrong unless it's exactly what they have, which sometimes they round in a strange way. So this question you got full credit on. And now we are on the last question. Okay. So um, the first one you can do, so this says uh, the airline charges the following baggage fee, $25 for the first bag, 35 for the second. Suppose 54% of passengers have no checked luggage, 34% have only one piece of checked luggage, and 12% have two pieces. We suppose the negligible portion of people check more than two bags. So the first question says the average baggage-related revenue per passenger is blank. So when you, as soon as you see average, you can also uh, change that to the expected. Okay. So remember, when we do expected value problems, I like to draw this chart, the three vertical lines. And then there are three possible outcomes. So I'm going to draw three horizontal lines. 
So the first column is going to be uh, outcome. This is going to be payout, probability, and multiply. So outcome, they could have one check bag, two check bags, or three check bags. Oh, now let's change that. They could have zero, one, or two. That's what I wanted it to be. Zero, one, or two. Zero check bags, one check bag, two check bags, and then it says a negligible amount of check more than two. So the people who have zero check bags, they pay nothing. So we get zero money from them. The people who have one check bag, they'll pay $25 for the first bag. So this is $25 per person. How much does the airline get for each person that has two check bags? Well, they're paying $25 for the first bag, $35 for the second. So the airline's actually making $60, 25 plus 35 per each person. Probability that a person checks zero bags is 54%, 0 0.54, 0 0.54, sorry. Checks one piece would be 0 0.34. Checks two would be 12.12. Now you can multiply these two columns and then add up the multiply column, but we also need the standard deviation, which you can't really do this way. The standard deviation is a messy thing. So unless it gives you some very direct, obvious distribution, you're gonna to wanna to stick to the calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two columns and I'm gonna put them into my calculator. So let's call this one L1 and this one L2. Okay, so if I go to my calculator, I'm going to go to my stat menu. I'm going to edit, clear that out, go up and hit clear enter. I'm going to put all the payout values into L1, 0, 25, or 60. And their probabilities into L2, 0 0.54, 0 0.34, 0 0.12. Now I'm going to hit stat again. I'm going to calculate statistics based off of this one variable. Now here's where you have to you have to change something. The list is L1. That's what these values are. We're trying to find the average and standard deviation of these values. The frequency, how often do these things happen? Well, this is 54% of the time, 34% of the time, 12% of the time. So the frequencies are coming from L2. So I want to put L2 right in there. Notice L2 is right above the two button. So I'm going to hit second two. And now I have L2 in that spot. And then I'll hit calculate. Gives me everything I need. So the first thing I want is the average. That's X bar. That's 15.7. The standard deviation. There is no population. I'm sorry. There is no sample standard deviation. There's just the population standard deviation. So this says nearest cent. So this is 19.95. So this is how much revenue should the airline expect for a flight of 120 passengers? Well, if they're expecting the average baggage-related baggage related revenue per person is this, and they're saying if I have 120 passengers, how much am I expected to make? Just multiply this by 120. 15.7 times 120. $1,884. And there you go.